Here's an interesting instrument I picked up recently. It's a Heathkit model IM5238 AC voltmeter. This was made, I believe, sometime in the 70s. I found a manual on the internet has a copyright date of 1976, so I'm not sure how long uh, they produce these particular meters. But they're all solid state. And they'll measure AC voltages from 12 different ranges, starting at 1 volt up to 300 volts. But they also have a D decibel range on it, which measures 0 decibels to plus 40 decibels. That uses the red scale on the top of the meter. Here's the inputs here. There's also outputs on the back that you can measure, uh, take measurements out. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to connect this up to some modern equipment I have and see how accurate it is. I don't know if this was built from a kit form and and whoever calibrated, who knows, you know, how long ago that was. So I'm going to open it up and check the inside and then we'll connect it up to some more modern equipment and check the accuracy of it and possibly calibrate it. These old analog meters are pretty handy to have when you're doing any work with old radio receivers. Um, following a moving needle is a lot easier than following changing digits on a digital readout. And although these don't have the accuracy of some of the modern equipment, they're still pretty handy to have. So that'll be the next step. Here's a view of the input of the unit. Real nice construction. All the components are labeled. And whoever built this, if this was kit built, they did a really nice job. Main range switch here. I'm measuring with a scope at C102. I'm running in AC in going through the range switch here. Now on the first six levels coming up from the lowest I'm getting input. On the higher levels I'm not. So here I'm on the lowest range here and I've got input so let's go up. That's the first one. Two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to go to the next one. I lose the signal. Go down. There's a uh, there's 300 millivolt range and there's the 1 volt range and then as I go up to 300 volts I get nothing so the next step I'm going to do is check this resistor R1 it's a 10 meg resistor and it looks like that might be open because if that opens the input signal cannot get in here so let's check that Here's Q106. It's electrolytic from the collector of Q102 over to the range switch. And right now, here it is here, it's an electrolytic. It's measuring 1.9 nanofarads. So that's definitely a bad cap. So I'll replace that. Well, this meter's fixed now. I've got uh, on a scope. 3.51 volts RMS, 10.16 peak to peak, and on the DVM, 3.47 volts. And on the 10 volt range, I got almost four 
so I need to do an alignment on it now but whereas before none of the ranges from 1 volt to 300 would register and the ones on 300 to 1 were way off so here's what the problem was C106 was open number one number two C103 was out of tolerance and I replaced C104 I pulled it out um, but since I had it out I replaced it anyway what, what I was happening here is I was getting a real low voltage on the uh, on the cathode of D101 it should be plus 12 volts that's the the clamping circuit here that clamps the input to plus or minus 12 so now I'm going to go through the calibration which is in the manual and I'll calibrate it to as a reference I'll use the Siglent the 1202X-E and this uh, MT826 I have that they're they're accurate a lot more accurate than this analog meter so and here's the caps I replaced here you can see here's one of the bad guys I didn't have any uh, 250 microfarad which would be here so I used a 330 but I figure I can compensate for that with a bias adjust so that shouldn't make any difference this is just a cap across the source resistor is uh, you know to increase the gain here bypassing one of the source resistors increases the gain if if this open it would decrease the gain quite a bit anyway um, unit seems to be working good now I'll calibrate it and come back and see what we find here's the calibration procedure according to the manual you connect a small jumper across the input terminals and then you connect a voltmeter between ground or the negative input terminal and connect the other terminal to the collector of Q102 and then you adjust the bias pot which is this one down here to 4 volts which I did. This uh, control is kind of touchy but you can zero it in on as close to 4 as you can get it. 4.01 is close enough for what I'm doing anyway. Plus it's an analog meter. So now we'll go to step 2. To adjust the AC to DC converter you connect a jumper from the bottom of this 10k resistor to the negative lead here and then you you center this adjustment this is the A you set A2 to the midpoint and then you adjust A1 which is this pot to zero and it's very very touchy yeah it's it's all over it'll it'll go from negative to zero to positive and you you're not going to set it right on zero get it as close as you can huh. easier said than done huh now after adjusting a1 to zero you go back to uh, a2 which is here and you uh, get it as close to zero as you can get it which I'm attempting Ooh, that's pretty close plus or minus point 0.1 so we're well within that okay the next point if you connect our voltmeter to Q109. You want to connect the collector of Q109 which is here. If I can grab 
what I want to grab. These are nice, but uh, you know what? They're nice, but um, for this particular point. I think this is nicer. So we'll go to the collector. Try not to short anything. And then we'll adjust the DC level adjustment, which is the top one here. And this one we've got to set it right down to zero volts, plus or minus two millivolts. Going the wrong way, here we go. It went past it, so we'll go back a little bit. There's two millivolts, there's three millivolts. <laughs> There's, she's jumping around here. Oh, there's zero, okay. There's zero volts. There's point <laughs> one, two. Um, I think it's close enough here. Anyway, that completes the um, adjustment of the AC to DC converter. Okay, the next steps I'm not going to go through, but basically you put a one kilohertz signal into the input of the unit and adjust it to a level and then you adjust for the high frequency calibration you've got a cap here a trimmer cap which you adjust here and there's a there's a, a uh, an adjustment for the mid frequency calibration which is R128 which is this resistor and you adjust that for a, a certain level on the, the front meter and if you go through the manual, they go through all these steps. Pretty basic. The nice thing here is um, having more modern equipment to use as a reference for these older older pieces here. Most of the new equipment I have here in my electronics lab are much more accurate than these old analog units. There is one more adjustment to do. Basically all that is is applying a known amplitude 1 kilohertz signal into the input which you go to the DB range and then here's an adjustment here that you adjust um, it's, the, it's the DB reference adjustment it's R169 and you'd adjust that for a specified uh, meter indication on the front meter and then that would complete your calibration Okay, I've got uh, the output of an HP 200 oscillator on 1 kilohertz connected to the DVM on the left and the Heath meter on the right. And I'm on the, uh, let's say I'm on the 10 volt scale and I have the DVM on showing 10.04 volts AC and the AC voltmeter is pretty close to the 10. So I'm going to drop it down to 3 volts and then we'll check the 3 volt scale. Okay, the meter's on 3 volts and I'll come up from 2.7. This, uh, control on the HP is a little tough to set exactly and there's 29.96 and it's pretty much on the 3 which is the 30 volt scale 3 volts full scale and it's pretty close on the 3 so I'm going to drop it down to uh, 1 volt. I 
I should have put this on a 10 turn pot I guess it would have been easier to adjust there's 0 0.961 we'll go to the 1 volt range and we're a little bit low let's see if we can get it closer nine point nine pretty close to the one okay, I'm gonna drop it down below and see if it's accurate to some lower voltages I'm gonna drop this way down put it on the 300 millivolt range and then we'll come up to 300 millivolts <laughs> I think I need to clean the pot on this old HP generator it's a little erratic This control is not linear on this pot. Okay. Coming up on 300 millivolts. That's pretty close. We're in the 300 millivolt range. We're slightly above 3, but not very much. I think next I'm going to hook up a Variac and we'll put some higher levels on it and see what we get. Okay, I have a Variac connected to an isolation transformer to the input of the meter. And I have the meter on the 10 volt range. I'm going to bring it up slow, I'll bring the Variac up. There's 10 volts. I'm going to go up to the 30 volt range. It's about 30. It's measuring a little bit high up to the 100 volt range let's stop at 60 all right we're measuring I get to stabilize here 60 or 61 on the DVM and on the 100 volt range we're right at 60 let's go up to 100 okay there's a hundred and that's pretty much on the 100 volt on the 100 volts there this would be 0 to 100 volts on this scale here and it's right on 10 let's look at the 300 volt scale and it's right on the 1 0 to 300 so it looks like we're we're accurate I'm not gonna go down below these ranges I suppose I could I well maybe I'll do that next I won't do that on video but uh, we'll we'll see how the lower range is down to 1 millivolt are here's a schematic of the voltmeter it's kind of interesting how they do this um, at least how they did it what 50 years ago the input comes in through J1 this is the input banana connector and J2 the black one is ground here comes in through the rain switch the the lower voltage ranges which is 1 through 300 millivolts are picked off through the top six connections of the rain switch the higher volt ranges which is 1 volt to 300 volts are picked off through the bottom six so there's a voltage divider here 10 meg and 1k which is about a thousand to one ratio and then it's connected through R10 what is it R101 here 
and there's two diodes that are configured as a clamper. There's this diode is connected to plus 12, this to minus 12, so this clamps the voltage to plus or minus 12 volts. Then it's fed into Q101. This is a JFET, and that provides a high impedance, and then that's coupled into a bipolar transistor, Q102. This whole section here is, is AC all the way through these sections here. And then at the output here, there's a, there's a range switch attenuator here that's also connected to the range switch here. These are both on the same control. Then the output of the attenuator uh, goes through these two clamping diodes. They clamp any high voltages to ground to protect the main amplifier. And then the next step is to amplify the signal through Q103 through 107. The signal is input to the main amplifier here, which is comprised of Q103 through Q107. Q103 and 104 form a differential pair on the input here, and the output through each of these transistors the gain for this stage, the DC gain, is controlled, set by R125, 24, 27, and 34. The AC gain is set by this through this capacitor, this feedback through R135, 128, and 125. You can adjust the gain with this gain pot here. The output at the collector Q107 connects first to through capacitor C113 to the AC to DC converter. It also is connected through this voltage divider through C114 and that's connected to an AC out jack on the output through here. The output from the main amplifier is connected into the AC to DC converter and it's applied to the input stage here, IC101 sections A and B. And these are part of a um, CA3046. It has five transistors on a, on a substrate. Uh, it's in a DIP package, IC package. And they form a diff amp differential amplifier here that drive Q108. The whole purpose of this section here is to convert the AC to DC. And you can't use a full wave bridge rectifier because of the, uh, the uh, drop across the diode. So what this basically does is forms a full, full wave bridge rectifier. It's a precision rectifier. Why they didn't use a pair of op amps here I don't know. Maybe because back in the day when this was built in the 70s, they didn't have good enough devices. I don't know. Or maybe they just had the parts here. But these parts are, um, nowadays you could use, um, you know, a higher speed op amp. A uh, dual op amp would work. And then the output, um, it comes out here. And through this divider, you have a, a DC out on the back of the unit here and the output is also connected down here through K terminal K to the log converter. The output from the AC to DC converter comes down through K into switch SW3. It's showing SW3 in the DB position here. In the volts position this contacts would be to the right and these to the left. So if you had it in the volts position basically the output of the AC to DC converter would go through directly through the meter to ground. Now in this position, the DB position, the input comes in and it's routed through this network here and into the log converter over here. And this works on the principle that 
the relationship between the collector current of a transistor and the base emitter is follows a logarithmic relationship. So over here, this uh, Q10 is just a constant current source driving Q103 here, or IC103. If you look at the way this is wired, this point here is a ground, and this is a ground. So following this point here, the output is taken through the VBE of IC104D through the emitter base junction of IC104C and then it comes up through the DB meter to the negative of the meter. The positive of the meter is connected to ground or back here. So the output is actually taking both of these base emitter currents in in series through the output of the meter. That output is also applied to this section here which is an inverting buffer whose main function here is just to invert that and provide an output at J7. When the DB switch is in the DB position the DB inverter section here provides 0.1 volts out for each volt on the meter and that can be used in an external circuit. Likewise the DC volts output connected here will provide an output on the back of the meter which will be one volt at full scale and that can be used to drive for example a chart recorder or another type of output one thing interesting is an addition here. Some of these whole sections like the AC to DC converter here, companies like uh, Maxim and analog devices make chips that would basically perform this whole section here on one small chip. But uh, of course this was made in the 70s. Those weren't available here. But uh, if some of these parts weren't available I suppose it would be possible to uh, if you didn't mind hacking this thing up you could uh, modify this circuitry using more modern circuits here which would be an interesting experiment well, this video is getting a little long now so I'm going to wrap it up so that's the end of this uh, one on the Heathkit model IM5238 so hope you enjoyed it Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.